Okay, uh, hello everyone. Uh, so me and Noam uh, will share this presentation. So this presentation is about the new uh, feature that we recently released in Primo and upcoming uh, in Primo V about uh, creating and customizing the email template. We are talking mainly in this uh, uh, feature spotlight about the ability to customize the email that, your, that the patron is sending through the interface. Uh, we will start first to sell to show you that this uh, um, the, the the structure of the presentation is that I will go give a brief introduction about the feature and what we wanted to have, and then uh, uh, we lead uh, uh, we'll hand over to Noam, we'll, which will going to pre provide you with much more uh, technical uh, step and guide you through the tips and tricks how to customize the email. So first, uh, I would like to uh, just give an introduction for the feature. So this feature is uh, originated in the nurse enhancement. Uh, and what we wanted to provide with this feature is the ability for you, the library, to customize the style and the content of the email, though this is what was requested for the nurse enhancement. It's also something that we really wanted to do since the day that the new interface uh, was launched. With this uh, feature now, we think we will providing you with a, a much more improved out-of-the-box template. We choose to have an HTML template for the email, which is HTML is a common language which you can uh, very easily customize and brand it to your uh, theme and also do uh, changes. Uh, so out of the box, we are providing you a, 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 a better format uh, based on HTML. And in addition to that, we are also providing you uh, ability to create your own customized template. So having said that, I just want to say that we, when we first design and choose to have it with the HTML, what we wanted with this feature is to provide you to maximize the flexibility and give you the choice to do either your own, uh, uh, either your own customization or use the out of the box. Uh, and uh, we will show you that. As, as I mentioned, this was released recently in November and it's upcoming with the February release for Primo VE. And the email template that we are talking about is the one that you are, your patron are used when they are clicking on the email action. And uh, the improved format look like this. You are having out of the box, we choose to have it, uh, to have the out of the box format as much as, uh, as much as, uh, uh, similar to the way that the new interface looks like. So there will be the ability to have the customized logo. If I'm signed in, there is will, the ability to have the note that signed in can, a uh, user can add and a, a, a format that is very similar to the brief display. We choose to have it that so you can also, once we are heading stuff to the uh, enhancement and feature to the brief display, you, by having the out of the box format, you can benefit uh, with having uh, uh, this include also in your email. So we have the brief display format and also the availability line calculated, and this is with the out of the box format. So, in addition to the out-of-the-box format, we are also providing you a way to customize. What we are going to do in this presentation is show you two examples. One example is going to, uh, to show you a way to completely change the template, to take your own template and use uh, the PNX in data, uh, how to use the PNX data and embed it into a new completely uh, different template. And the other side is uh, take the out of the box that we provided and enhance it with uh, small changes. Uh, and Noam is going to show you both uh, examples. Also, if the one that want to change to, to remain with the out of the box, but do an easily changes, they can do it also through the Primo Studio. So we also uh, wanted to, uh, to give as much as power either uh, very easily changes through the Primo Studio or within the customization package. We choose to have uh, this template within the 
uh, as an HTML and also as part of the customization package, as part of our goal to help you uh, make your customization in one place. So the same customization zip can include also the email template if you choose to have your own uh, uh, adjustment to that. Um, so before I hand over to Noam to show you the example, I also want to share with you some uh, additional thing that you get with this feature is uh, when you have, when you choose to customize uh, the template, which also support localization, and Noam will show you a way to do it via, via the translation label, but you can also have a dedicated HTML per language, so it's up to your choice. Uh, because the email, uh, we also want to uh, add that we are also uh, 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 um, put a security on on the top, and in order to be able to not to include links in the template, we uh, choose to remove any links that are coming uh, through the customized uh, template. And uh, so we will show you also uh, that the link is being that link that to the full display is being created in the server side, um, and uh, in also also to. Um, give you a virus free email we also make sure to include a disclaimer at the bottom of the email um also so as said we are providing this out of the box there is also a way to roll back and use the existing format um, and also we would like to include before i hand over to noam that uh, we uh we are going to support the new customized email only when you send up to 50 items from the uh, either my favorites or my library cards uh, due to uh, performance so uh, to summarize this introduction before i end over to noam so what we want to show you here is how uh, 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 how flexible this is and to guide you through the steps of how can it, uh, to customize it and noam please take control uh, as Nelly said it's uh, noam amit uh, from the development uh, uh, team of primo and primo ve and i'm here to show you the demo part and uh, as all demos it's a tricky part so uh, i will uh, do my best to uh, uh, to make it succeed but uh, there's no reason to think it uh, it won't the way i'm going to do it i'm going to show you two recipes two examples i'm going to uh, first go over each uh, each example what i want to show then i'm going to show you the i'm going to uh, talk about the steps i'm going to perform and then i'm going to uh, try and do it uh, uh, live. So the first example, um, which uh, I believe uh, uh, many institutions want to use if they have uh, an existing email template in their organization and they want to use it as is without uh, using our out of the box uh, template. When uh, so, I'm going to show you an example where the input is is, ex is a, an existing external HTML template. Uh, I'm, uh, you have to understand that when you want an email to be displayed in your uh, in uh, email clients, you need to follow design guidelines for uh, email clients, which include, uh, uh, among other stuff, inline CSS. You can cannot use the uh, an external CSS. You uh, should avoid animations and so on. The output of the a demo will be an embedded template with PNX data, which is dynamic and uh, represents the records you want to send by email. I'm going to use, you can use whatever editor you want. I'm going to use uh, my own uh, development environment with the uh, Primo uh, Explore DevEnv, which uh, most of you I hope know by now, which is the, the tool we created with the Primo new UI to uh, develop customization packages uh, on top of Remo. So there's, there's uh, several steps I'm going to show you for the first recipe. I'm going to start by taking an, an external template as is. I'm going to add a binding. Okay, this is, a, uh, this is the two lines of code here. I'm going to tell the template 
you, uh, I'm going to define in the template what represents a single record. And I'm going to, and, and if you know Angular, then I'm binding the HTML elements to the array of records in our code. If you don't know Angular, then just take the HTML element that represents one record and add these HTML attributes. attributes. This will connect them to the actual data uh, of the records. Okay, so it's, it's exactly this uh, syntax. Then I'm going to go into the HTML template. I'm going to replace all the hard-coded data that, that, that exists in the template because it's a, it's a, it's an example I took for us from somewhere in the web. I'm going to replace it with data from the PNX. I'm going to show you how to uh, define the single link you want in your templ template to the full record by this uh, attribute. And I'm going to show how to display item, uh, uh, information from the PNX, in this example, the title of the record. And then I'm going to show you uh, a way to replace um, the logo, our out-of-the-box logo, logo element that you can use. If you want to use the logo as is from your back office, you can use it. If you, for some reason, whether it's because your, uh, the logo you uploaded to the, uh, in the back office is very large and it doesn't look good in email, if you want to use another uh, logo, then you can just uh, use your own HTML um, uh, to present the logo, the same logo in the that's in the back office, and uh, and adjust it. It it looks a feel for your uh, own uh, for your own benefit. Then I'm going to show. Uh, we're going to talk about that uh, once you completed your uh, template, you want to test it with a single record, and then test it with multiple records. And then you should go into the back office and upload either the entire customization package or just the specific uh, HTML template that you saved on your uh, on your machine. So this is the environment I currently set up my development environment to work against. It's a, it's a it's a Primo instance with the uh, with the November release. Um, and this is the developer environment in which I'm going to show you the, the code examples. I'm going to try to make it as big as possible. And the first step, the first step was take, uh, take an example somewhere from the web. So I'm going to use um, this page here. It has very nice email templates uh, in material design. This is hard coded. It's just an example I found somewhere. If I want to use this uh, email template for my organization, I'm going to uh, try to inspect the element. You can see it's a, it's a very nice template that has uh, documentation on each section, uh, what it, uh, it contains. And I can see I have, a, in this case, I can see the email starts here and ends somewhere uh, somewhere here, so I can take the HTML code from here, copy it, and put it inside my editor. You can see it's a good HTML template because it uses uh, the somewhat uh, legacy HTML uh, elements of tables because that's the best approach if you want to design your uh, email template uh, correctly. So it uses tables, so I think it's, it's good enough for me. I took it to my to my editor and I just pasted it here. Okay, you can see it's it, it went through uh, a bit of changes, but that's originally uh, started as that template. Okay, going back to the presentation, the second step is adding the binding. Okay, so you can see this is the table, the original table up to here, and I added these two attributes okay that you can use as is which which the 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 most important one is, is this one i'm saying go over all the items in okay if you know the customization concept 
in the parent controller, go over all the items and do whatever inside what whatever's inside this table will will uh, happen for each and every record. So next step, I want to re replace hardcoded data with the PNX data and create a link. So I'm gonna jump in the code to the specific. Okay, the specific uh, uh, part of the template is this one. The, the, the HTML was already here. There was a line and then a cell and then a, a link. And I marked this link with this data attribute. You need to use it as is. Okay, and I didn't put anything in the anchor link because we want the, the link to be generated in the server side. Whatever we put here will be replaced anyway, so you can leave it empty. And this will create a deep link to the to the record. And I want in, I want the display. Okay, I want to display the title. You can see I binded this text to item Phoenix display title. Okay. And I took the, the, since it's an array, I took the first element in the title, but you can use it as is always if you want to present the title. This will create a link with the, uh, a link, an anchor link to the full record, full, uh, uh, to, to the, a permalink to the record with the title as the text. Okay. And below I have another line in which I binded some other elements from the PNX, and you can you, uh, you can see usually you you would want to bind uh, elements from your display section, so you want you can use the contributor creation date format description uh, and so on. Okay, so once I I'm gonna pause here from uh, once I did uh, all of these uh, steps, I want to go and see. Uh, how does the uh, uh, template display in the system? For that, you can either go into the system, search for an element, uh, then send it by email and see how it uh, gets to your system because you want to see it in, an, in a real email client. But before you do that, you can go into uh, this page here. It's, it's, it's a state called email template. You need to set up some parameters and you can see it's it's with mock data it's not the real data and you can see how the the uh, template we used here and embedded some html data into it looks uh, uh, for two uh, for two example records hard coded uh, in the system okay so this is how it looks if you think it's it looks okay then you can go into the system, perform a search. Session probably timed out. Okay, so you can go into the system, uh, send an email. And this is before I even uploaded it to the back office. If you remember the concept of the development environment, I'm not. I'm, I'm working on my machine against a, a, a real Primo instance. I can send an email and see uh, see the result in my inbox. Uh, my inbo uh, my email uh, client is currently closed, so it won't interrupt with our work. But I'm going to show it later uh, later on. Going back to the presentation, the next step, okay, it gets uh, more interesting as we uh, proceed with the steps. The, the next one is replacing the PRM logo, the out of the, uh, creating your own uh, logo instead of the out of the box uh, logo. So, um, created some examples up here. So Currently, the, the template, as we saw here, does not have a logo at all, okay? There's no logo uh, of the institution at all. If you want to add a logo, the, the simplest thing to do is just use the PRM logo as is, okay? 
And if I refresh the template page, you can see you can barely see. Oh, okay, you can see that's the, the tricky part. You can see something happened. But, and I chose this example, if you look at the logo here, the logo for this specific instance is white. And if I just use the PRM logo this way, it will be white on white. It's, it's, not, it's not any good in, in the template I currently designed or stole off the uh, internet from someone. So just using it, it as is, is not a good option. It's too big. And you can't really see it. Okay, so that's what I wrote here. Logo example uses it. What, what if it's too big? Then I'm going to comment it out and I'm going to show another logo example. Okay, so I'm, I'm using best practices of email clients. So I'm using a table inside it a row, inside it a cell, and then I'm putting an image. Okay, this is exactly the same code that the PRM logo uh, uh uses okay and i'm defining its source as the image for my customization package and i'm setting its height I'm, I'm i'm telling it don't be over 60 pixels and a background color which is most suitable for my uh my current email template refreshing the page so I'm going to see now, I can see my white logo because it's over a, a, a bluish background. So now, however distasteful, it's, it's, it's there. You can see it. So these are the options for presenting the logo, which is a bit, uh, it's a bit more advanced, but, um, but you can see there's a simple solution for everything. Next step for this external um, template would be to test with a single record and test with multiple records. Okay, of course, if you go into the system and select uh, multiple records, you can, uh, you can send them by email. Okay, and and test that they are sent correctly and uh, you receive them as designed going back to the presentation okay once you tested you can upload via the back office and deploy uh, the customization package to see it live on your system since i just used the development environment the system will behave exactly the same uh, uh, in the development environment, as it uh, uh, in the production instance, as it did in your development environment, as usual. Second recipe. I'm going to take the OTB template and do some adjust adjustments. Okay, uh, I'm going to use Primo Studio now, which does exactly the same as the development environment, but I want to show it uh, on Primo Studio as well. The first step I'm going to do is change the colors a bit. I'm going to change the font. I'm going to replace uh, hard-coded text with a label. A label you can you can use whatever label uh, we added out of the box, but you can also add labels uh, uh, via the code table and reference them. Uh, from the template. This gives you multilingual uh, abilities without the need to create uh, multiple templates. So just you can create just an English template, but use labels for all of the labels. So the so multilanguage will be supported with only one HTML template. Then I'm going to replace the out of the box peer and brief results container, which contains uh, the brief results and the availability line with just the brief result, which is the, just the three, four lines of the uh, metadata from the PNX. I'm going to add uh, the OCLC ID field just as an example 
below and the availability component separately from the uh, uh, under that. Then again, we're going to test and upload and deploy. So I'm going to switch to Primo Studio, which is here. Okay, so if I go into Primo Studio, I can choose the choose the email uh, section. Okay. I'm going to try to make it as big as possible. You can see here a preview of the exact, it's the exact same screen we saw before with the uh, mock examples. You can see a preview here of whatever you will do. And I said that the first thing I'm going to show, I'm going to try and make it large. I'm going to show how to uh, change colors. So if I take the background color here of the table and change it to pink and I'm, I'm clicking control s to save zoom out and it's going to reload with the pink color so that's fairly easy if i want to change the font of the entire email probably there's a lot of ways to do it but i'm going to wrap the ent entire template with a div that has a font family a different font family from the default and I'm going to save again, and it's going to refresh with a different font. So that's fairly easy. Uh, the two uh, first uh, examples are fairly easy. Now I want to use to show you how you can use labels, which is a pretty powerful uh, feature that you can use in, uh, throughout all of the customization package, but it's uh, it's also useful in an email template. So I took this uh, label here, the email items found label, and I put it somewhere here. Let's again zoom in. It's here somewhere. Let's, let's find it again. Okay, you can see the out of the box uh, template has a lot of use to the uh, translate element. And I added a somewhere here an additional one but can't find it right now it will pop up later on so so oh here it is okay so just below the institution note i added a line again the table structure is recommended for email templates with a cell that has the uh, the labels of items found I saved, I'm refreshing the screen. And you can see here the items from State Library of New South Wales, which we, which uh, if you didn't understand yet, that's the environment I'm demoing against. Again, I'm not actually working on the environment. I'm just, I'm working on my local machine with uh, against the, the environment. So you can see it's a dynamic label. It's not giving me uh, the out of the box label, but the label of the specific, uh, institution okay going to the fourth uh, step i want to really uh, uh, i want to use my own code but i want to use elements from the primo user interface that are supported right now i'm going to show the brief results and the availability line so going into this section here you can see Going back to the, it's, 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 it's very important, so I'm going to uh, talk about it again. In order for an email template to be able to be binded or connected to the records, it must have uh, the angular binding uh, that you can see here, this ng repeat, okay? You must have this section, and it needs to be an attribute on 
the specific HTML element representing one record. In this case, this line, this uh, TR element, a line in the table represents one record. So I added the binding here. Okay, you can see the out of the box uh, 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 element we used is the brief results container. I want to replace it, so I'm going to comment it out. And then I want to add the brief results, brief result element. Okay, here I'm using it like this. I'm telling it uh, what this is the imp two important attributes. Okay. I'm telling it this is an item, so you can so the element will know which element it needs to render or display, and I'm telling it to, to be rendered as an email. Okay, so these are the two actually uh, important uh, attributes. Then I'm using the availability line directive or element. Okay, again I'm telling it what is an a single item and to display as an email and then I added uh, a div which is not really a best practice to shove a div inside uh, a, a table cell but just for the sake of the example I, I added a div you can see I used inline CSS because otherwise the email client will not uh, will not uh, uh, render the CSS uh, rules. And um, uh, uh, span that, that with the hard-coded label, I did not use the justice to show you the ability to use a hard-coded label, and then probably add templates for each and every language. So I had added actually two hard-coded labels, additional information, OCLC ID, and then I binded it to uh, to every OCLC ID I have in my item PNX additional data. So it's not the display section as I demoed earlier, it's another section of the PNX called additional data. And then I, this will happen, uh, this will render every OCLC ID I have uh, in the record. I did a lot of changes at once, so surprisingly, Surprisingly, it worked. So this is again mock data. So you can see it's not a real number, but you can see the additional information. You can see the uh, OCLC ID uh, label, and then you can see the mock data uh, after it. The availability component, you can see it's here, although but but the the difference is that I used it separately. Okay, I use it. That means you can take it. That's to demo you that you can break it, the the display to two different elements and then play with the order. I can put it um, all the way down. Let's do something a bit funny, but put it before the metadata just to show you why would you want to do such a thing if you wanted the availability line to be before the metadata itself. So that's how you do it. Um, again, after you uh, performed your changes, you need to test with a single record, test with multiple records, and then upload and deploy the changes. I'm going to I hand it over back to Nelly. Thank you, Nam. It's always a pleasure to learn from you. Uh, so what we try to see here is the step the steps and we try to cover some of scenarios that we thought we you might be interested, either using the out of the box, either enhancing it or replace it entirely. We will put the presentation available for you so you can uh, use all of those uh, uh, guidelines. Uh, I think that what we wanted to enhance, uh, to emphasize is how uh, we maximize the flexibility, also what you can benefit when using uh, uh, the directory from the client side, um, 
like in the case availability line, like you are getting uh, as much as you can the RTA, the real-time availability calculation using the availability calculation. Um, and I think that uh, uh, this is actually what we wanted to share with you and to also let you know those guidelines and, and use it. 